Okay, we're going to be learning about finance and about compound interest. Like this one, remember when air was free and now it's $1.50? You know why? Inflation. All right, let's try to do this here. So we've got, uh, let's say we, we consider the situation. We have $5,000 and you invest it in a fund. It grows at a rate of 7% per year. And we count, we compound this yearly. We'll explain this a little bit later. Um, how much do you have at the end of four years? I'm just trying to show you sort of how it works in general here. So let's just say I'll take my calculator here. I'll actually figure out what I have. I mean, clearly right now at the beginning, I have 5,000, right? Well, if I have 5,000 and it increases at a rate of 7%, you know, you could say, well, then I'll multiply it by 0 0.07, right? But I want to take that amount and add it to it. So technically, I should do 1.07. That's just a little trick, because otherwise, in case, keep in mind, I can do this plus 5,000, sure. But here's a little trick. A little trick is to say 5,000, I multiply it by 107%. See, the reason I like to put the one point there is that it includes that value and then it adds the other amount. See, it's the same thing, it's just quicker. So I'm gonna use that idea right here. So I'm actually gonna say, okay, well, after one year, how much is remaining? Whoops. Mm. Let me just see so I can draw it. So after one year, how much is remaining? Well, there's going to be 5,000, and it's going to be times 1.07, right? So that will give me that number. What was it again? It was uh, 5350. All right. So if I have that, so 5350. Okay. How much after two years then? Maybe I won't put it in a square like that. How much after two years? Well, I take that 5350, if that makes any sense. That's one way to do it, is to say I'll take 5350, and I'll multiply that by 1.007. Do you see that? So I can say, all right, that answer right there times 1.07. I end up with that. So 5724.5. 5724.5. And I keep going. So the next one then is going to be. 6125.22. I think you get the idea, right? And then I do it again one last time. And I say, boom, I have uh, 6553.98. Okay, so 6553.98. This is how much I have remaining after the four years. Now that's kind of annoying, right? To have to keep doing this over and over again. So there is a trick, of course, right? So the trick is to think of this instead uh, a little bit like a, um, well, we could think of it actually as a geometric, as some sort of geometric uh, sequence. So some sort of geometric sequence, like uh, remember it goes un equals u1 times r to the n minus 1, something like this, something where you start with some number and you have some sort of multiplying factor. You could actually rewrite this in that form. Now the good news is, we actually get a formula for it. So we get a formula for compound interest. By the way, I like this because it says interesting. Get it because it's compound interest. So there's a formula in your formula booklet, uh, and here it goes. So it says, um, and it actually, it's, it's written just like this. So it says FV equals, and it goes uh, PV times one plus, uh, wait, then it goes R over 100 times K to the power of K N. Right. Yeah, yeah, that'll be right. Okay, so this is a formula we need. So this is just a formula we can use. Do you notice it looks kind of geometric like it looks sort of, you know, there's a number times a number to the, you know, to some exponent. So it's something like that. But we have to decode what everything here means. Okay, this is going to be the important part. So FV is future value. That's how much money is remaining later. PV is how much money there is now. R is the nominal annual interest rate. That's the interest rate you're getting or earning or paying or whatever per year. So that's just, and it's done as a percent. So it'll be like seven if it's uh, 7%. You can see that they've accounted for that because they divide by 100, right? So seven over 100, you see that? Because literally percent in French, for example, means pourcent. It's like over 100. It literally means divide by 100. Um, we've got this K right here. It's a number of compound periods per year. Now that one might sound a little bit weird. This is how many different times we're calculating the amount here. This one right here can be done, uh, for example, it could be done um, could be done yearly, then k equals 1. 
it could be, I don't know, um, let's say monthly. And then K equals, let's see, how many months are in a year? 12. It could be, you know, weekly, then it's 52. It could be daily, 365, and so on. It could be biannually. That means it happens twice per year. So there's a few of these different things. This is the important part, okay, is figuring out how many times it's done. N is the number of years, and away you go. You just calculate. So this right here can be done either by hand or with a calculator. Very often you're allowed a calculator for this. But let's just see then an example and see if we can do this. So let's say, I want to be a millionaire. So I want to have a million dollars in my account in 30 years. So I invest it in a fund uh, that earns a nominal annual interest rate of 7.1%, compounded monthly. That's going to be key here. That means K is going to be 12, 12 times per year. How much money do I need to invest now? What helps to, again, just rewrite your equation. Again, show your teacher, whoever it is, that you know what you're doing, right? So the future value equals the present value times 1 plus uh, R over 100 K, all that to the KN. So we just got to figure out what every letter is going to be. So how much do I need to invest now? Does that make sense that that is PV? I want to know that value. This now right here, that is PV. I want to know that present value. I want this. All right, do I know what everything else is? Let's see if we can figure those out. So I like to just write them out like as a list. So future value, I know that needs to be a million. Okay, what's R? R is the annual interest rate, that's 7.1. K, what's that? Uh, K is the number of compound periods per year, so that's 12. What is N, the number of years? That's 30. Well, I just gotta put this in, it's just that simple. So I put everything into my calculator. Well, I'll just write it all out first. So 1 million equals present value, which I don't know, times 1 plus 7.1 over 100 times 12. All that to the power of 100, is that, no, of 12 times 30. This is what I want. OK. So there's a number of ways of now solving this, okay? Because we could do this in a whole bunch of different ways. We could actually solve this, I mean, just with our um, calculator. We could actually sit there and figure this all out. So let me show you that. So I'll actually just do it all in my calculator right now. Let's see here, come on calculator. Come on, where are you? There we go. So if I do this right here, I could sit there and uh, calculate this. So let's see here. Whoa. I could sit there and uh, I'll figure out these different details, right? So. I mean, that's one way of doing it. Another way I like to do it, um, have you ever heard of nsolve before? Because of course, we, we our goal is to just get for PV by itself. There's lots of different ways of doing it, okay? There's tons of ways. Um, I could actually figure out what all this mess is, do this to the power of you know 12 times 30 and all that, uh, a million divided by that. In fact, I'll do it that way first. I'll start with that. So I'll do um, one plus, it's just that unfortunately, uh, the way I've got it written, it's, um, it's a little bit hard to see where I've put my numbers here. So 7.1 1 over, um, well, this will be 1,200. Whoops. Or 1,200 here. That's what I need. Okay, I'll do that value. And then I'll do that to the power of, and I'll make sure to make it uh, 12 times 30. All right, so I get that. That right there is my magical number there, right? And I have to do a million divided by that. So one divided by that answer. So there we go. So I need to have 119,586. Uh, I'll write that down. So 119,586. There we go. That is my answer. And that's how much I actually need. That's my FV. OK? So that is what I do need to have right now. So if I invest that amount of money right now, that's you know, in 30 years, and I'll have a million. Now, there was a number of, of ways of doing this. Remember, I talked about nsolve. Let's see about how to do it that way. nsolve helps if you know there's only one solution, though. So we go to algebra here, and I'll use numerical solve. Now, I would actually just type it all in like this. So I'd say a million. I'd say equals. There's an equal sign here. Equals, um, I'll just call it x, because that's the thing I'm trying to find times, and I'll open a bracket here and say 1 plus, I'll say 7, whoops, I'll do a fraction here, 7.1 over 100, well, I'll do 1,200 because I know that's the answer there, 
that to the power of, remember it was 12 times 30 here. The only difference is when you use n solve, you put your whole equation, but you have to remember to put comma and put an x, whatever variable you're solving for. And it tells me the answer directly. So that's another way of doing it. Okay, so this hopefully you'll see is a nice way to just, uh, you know, solve on your calculator. So you use this equation first, and then we solve it. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to use your calculator. It has a finance function to do it much, much faster.